guys, my name is Julie and this is The Curated Curvy where hopefully I can bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands. Today I have for you a pattern review. The pattern that I will be reviewing is McCall's 8320. This is from their new pattern um, release. I believe it was their last summer collection or their only summer collection, if I am not mistaken. When I was watching a lot of people review that pattern release, there was a lot of buzz around this pattern in particular, and I can see why. It is super sweet. The details are really fun, and it has pentux. Pentux are really in right now. They're making a really strong comeback, and so a lot of us seamstress, sewists, whatever you'd like to call yourselves, are itching to get our hands on patterns that include some of those really fun details. When you get the pattern, the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and check the back of the pattern, you know, for all the fun information like your size, how much fabric you'll need, and if they include finished garment measurements. McCall, as of pretty recently, has been including finished garment measurements on the back of their patterns, which is amazing so that you don't have to wait until you open up the pattern to make sure or to gauge how much yardage you will actually need to complete the project. For this pattern, McCall's put me at, puts me at a size extra large. However, when I look at the finished garment measurements for a, for a size extra large, at the bust, the finished garment measurements is 51 and a half inches. I have a bust of 44 inches. That would put me at about seven inches of wearing ease, which, which is extremely too much. If you look at the image of the model wearing the picture, I can guarantee you that there is not seven inches of wearing ease in her dress. So I did size down to a size large to get closer to the image on the pattern envelope because after all, isn't that what we're all going for? With that being said, I went ahead and I sewed up view C. In terms of cutting out the pattern, it really wasn't that difficult. View C, I believe, has six pattern pieces. And then in those six pattern pieces, they do not include pattern piece number two, which is a cutting guide so that you can do your pin tucks first, put your guide on, and then cut it out. Cutting out the pattern altogether was relatively simple and came together very quickly. Again, there's not a lot of pattern pieces to cut out, so it didn't take that long. The yardage on the envelope says that for a size large of you see you need about two and three eighths yards of fabric i used one flat bed sheet twin size that i thrifted from the thrift store so and i used pretty much all of that sheet i had some pretty big scraps left over but definitely not enough to put together a garment so i would say that that's about right as I mentioned before, the sizing on the back of the pattern, when I looked at that, I put myself at a size large. So that is the size of the pattern pieces that I cut out. This pattern does run in sizes extra small to extra, extra large. And with the amount of ease in this pattern, you could probably be a little smaller than their extra, extra a little smaller than their extra small and a little larger than their extra, extra large. As I mentioned um, that for the size extra large, the amount of wearing ease would have been about seven inches, whereas for the size large they put their wearing ease for the size large at 47 and a half inches again I have a bust of 44 and then I cut down some of the um, seam allowance so I only sew at five I only sew at half an inch seam allowance as opposed to five eighths of an inch seam allowance which would give me about an extra inch to play with in terms of finished garment measurements and so all together that would give me about four inches of wearing ease and as you can see I feel like it fits pretty nicely and pretty close to the pattern envelope all right, so let's get into sewing the actual garment. When I was sewing this, I did try to record some footage and I will put that in. Unfortunately, halfway through the project or like close to the finish line, I became sick. And so I wasn't able to record me finishing the dress and I'll talk about, so I'll do my best to talk about what was done. Um, and during those processes and i know that in all of my original plans videos i said that i was going to be doing it in a black flat sheet that i picked up however i think that i want to do it in a bit more exciting fabric so recently when i was thrifting i picked up these two fabrics and these are the two fabrics that i was in between this fabric it is absolutely stunning however i am concerned that all of those really nice details are going to get lost in the print of this fabric because i'm doing vc with all the pin tucks and then the um the sleeve situation so i'm very concerned that all of those details are going to get lost in the print of this fabric so i'm thinking this was a cotton bed sheet obviously and this was another bed sheet i think i have the flat sheet and the fitted sheet but i'm thinking i'm gonna do it in this one because the color is really pretty 
it's really subtle and I think that the details will still be able to shine through because the fabric isn't so incredibly busy. So for the bodice, one of the things that I'm sure kind of like scare a lot of people off or concern a lot of people are all of these pen tucks. The pen tucks are actually not that hard to sew in but they are the most time consuming component of the dress. The pattern rates the dress at an average and I would dare to say that it's not really an average, it's an easy. Once you get down a solid method of how to construct your pen tucks you can go through it pretty quickly now the pattern instructions are very vague when it comes to the pen tucks I'm sure they're assuming that if you look at the pattern piece you look at the instructions it's not that hard to figure out what to do what I would suggest doing is on your fabric using either a pen that has erasable ink or Taylor's chalk or whatever you use to mark up your fabric I would suggest you make a guide on your fabric for where your fold line is and where your stitching line is and that both of those lines don't look the same and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay so here we have the instructions and it literally just says um, crease along the fold lines wrong size together and stitch along the stitching lines. I think I know what that means but I mean that they could have done like a better diagram or something. I feel like that's lacking a little. Anyway Okay, so I'm pretty sure what you are going to do is if this is my fold line here, then I'm going to crease along my fold line here. And then I am going to stitch along my stitching line and that is going to make one tuck. Now, full disclosure, I don't feel like pinning and pressing all of this. So I'm just going to take it to my machine and we're going to test out our luck because I feel like this is going to take long enough as is without me having to press and everything. I might just stick a few pins in there to hold it in place with each row and just do it that way. So. By doing this, you can easily see when you get to the sewing machine where you need to fold and where you need to stitch. It doesn't take away the time consuming part of this project, but it definitely gives you a cleaner, neater, more uniform finish at the end that you can be very happy with. Once you have put in all of your pen tucks, which again is the most time consuming part of this project, I think it took me 20 minutes to do each panel. <laughs> that is just for these two panels alone. Anyways, once you are done sewing in your pen tucks, what you're going to do is you are going to take your pattern piece number two, you're going to lay that on the fabric and you're going to use that as a cutting guide and then you are going to cut out a new pattern piece. That will become these two sections. So when you do the pen tucks, you're doing it in a rectangle. Once you're done, you're going to lay your pattern piece on, you're going to cut that pattern piece out and again that becomes these two sections. Now for me, I did not pay that close of attention to the instructions and so I cut out pattern piece number two as an actual pattern piece. So I went ahead and lined these pieces and put a bow in the middle. I definitely regret this. I do not like this bow. I think it should have been a lot thinner and it's not something that I would try again in the future but that is what I did. If you don't do this, which you probably shouldn't, then you'll, once you sew in these two pieces, you'll add on the button plackets, which I believe is pattern piece number three. Follow the instructions for that and then construct the rest of the garment. With this pattern, this portion here is a bib. So this is cut, or uh, this is sewn and then attached to this piece of the dress around here. So you attach one side first, stitching right here. You attach the next side here, stitching here. And then you flip those up and you pin up this bottom edge all together and then you stitch along that. Moving on to the sleeves of the dress. So the sleeves of the dress have pin tucks and then they have two pin tucks. Both pin tucks are an inch, um, one inch wide each. It is the same method that you use here. It's just you are working with larger pin tucks. So you sew up your pin tucks first. I don't know if the pattern instructions call for that. I tend to go rogue quite a lot and <laughs> I don't rely on the pattern instructions as heavily as I possibly should. But this garment is really a simple construction, which again is why I'm not sure about the average rating. I guess they're saying average because of the details. But in terms of construction, this comes together really easily. So once you've done the pen tucks here, doing the pen tucks on the sleeve is like no sweat, no problem. So I sewed up my pen tucks first and then I closed up my sleeve. I put in my gathering stitches and attached them to 
the arm size and that came together really easily when i tried it on initially i was planning on putting in the elastic and honestly the only thing that prevented me was that i did not have the proper width of elastic however i really do However, I really do like the sleeves being able to just be like open and flutter out. I'm really not mad at that at all. And I don't really think that I'm gonna go back and add the elastic for this dress. The last thing that I did with this dress was I added two pen tucks on the bottom of the dress. When I tried it on for like my final fitting, the dress came well below my knees. And again, if you look at the pattern on the low, <laughs> this dress does not go below her knees. And if you see, it's kind of shot or here it gives the it gives the vibe of a mini dress it doesn't give you the vibe of a dress that's like not quite midi length but somewhere in between so because i wanted my final and like image of the dress or my final version of this dress to look as close to the pattern envelope as possible initially i was just going to cut off about two to three inches off the bottom of the dress um serge around it and then like hem it However, I real I thought about it and I was like, well, they have these fabulous pin tuck details in the sleeves and they don't show up anywhere else in this with on the dress. So I decided to go ahead and do two pin tucks at the bottom. Figuring out the measurements for those pin tucks, I mean, it wasn't complicated, but it definitely um, took a little more thought than not. So what I ended up doing was going four inches up from the seam or four inches up from the bottom of the dress and then I drew my fold line as it one and a half inches up from that for the first pin tuck and I drew my stitching line. From that stitching line I went up another three inches I want to say and then I drew my next fold line and then that pin tuck was one inch and I drew my stitching line and it came together perfectly and I feel like the length of the dress for me personally is perfect because I wanted this again to be more of a mini dress than not. All right, so any negatives that I have for this pattern? The only negative that I have is the neckband construction. So it could be one of two things. It could be that because I left off the button placket, I have extra room here in the front than I was supposed to have when that neckband went on. But when you cut out the neckband piece, it's a strip of fabric that you cut on the bias and then you are supposed to stretch it so that it goes around the entirety of the neckband and then continue to stitch it on as you would any other bias tape. Because there was so much width for me around the neckline, I ended up having to stretch it a lot and I was able to do that, but it was very uncomfortable to do. I do believe that the purpose of this is that when you stretch it and you're done sewing it, it pulls it in so that this neckline sits nicely on your neck, which it is undisputed that it does, but it just wasn't enjoyable. And because again, I didn't include the button placket as it was supposed to be done, I wonder if that is what caused my discomfort in sewing that and what made it more difficult difficult than it needed to be. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this pattern review. I am ecstatic with this dress. I am going to sew it again and I am going to do the proper button placket because I literally hate, <laughs> I really don't like these bows. But that was an error of my own and not an error of the pattern. The pattern is beautiful. I think the dress is beautiful. I'm very, very happy with the fabric that I chose and I would definitely 10 out of 10 recommend this pattern. All right, so that is going to be it for this pattern review. If you have stayed this far in the video, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a comment below and don't forget to tap that like button. Oh yeah, and if you want to, subscribe. <laughs> and until next time, I'll see you later. Stay beautiful and make great things. Bye.